Well, thank you very much and a very pleasant good evening to you all, wherever you may be listening from tonight. We do welcome you to Zeppos in Pullman, Washington for the second edition of the Cougar Coaches Show with Cougar Head Coach Todd Schulenberger as the Washington State University Cougars coming off of a successful weekend at home with a couple of victories. First things first, Coach, happy Monday to you, and I'm sure a couple wins in the bank has got to make this Monday show feel a little bit better for you. Yes, Steve, happy Monday for sure. Anytime you get two wins over a weekend, you can decompress for about a day. And then it's back to the next thing in task. But, uh, yes, we're excited for a great week that we had. Two quality wins over a couple of quality teams in both the Montana Grizzlies and the Idaho Vandals. And we're going to be here with not only head coach Todd Schulenberger, we're going to have one of the players of his roster come up and talk to us for just a little bit as well. Reese Tappen is going to be joining us here as part of the show as well here on the Cougar Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger. And not only two wins, Coach, as that improves your mark to two and one on the season, but an historic win for you. Win number 100 in your career at Washington State University. So congratulations on that. I know you were talking about getting that first win for Ann McCoy as athletic director. You crossed that off the list Thursday night, and then you pick up win number 100 on Sunday. Talk about each of those and, and the significance that that plays for you. Well, first of all, Ann McCoy, you know, she um – it's an awesome opportunity for Ann, and uh, she's the one who hired me here 10 years ago. And uh, we talked about that story last week, so I was excited for Ann to get her first win as AD, and, and she's going to get her first football win hopefully this weekend That's as well. That's right. So That's right. It, everything plays out for a reason. But, um, you know, great staffs now, great players now, great former staff, former players, everything I've been very fortunate to have with me along this journey. And uh, I say it all the time, winning is hard, and especially in the game of soccer because those things can go any way. But uh, we're, we're happy. It's over. It's done. Let's move on. Let's go get those Stanford chopped down some trees next weekend. No, I understand <laughs> you're always looking forward to the next one, but I'm going to take just a little extra second. I'm a media okay. guy. I got to right. milk this a little bit here. 100 wins in your career. In really nine seasons, because, I mean, you, you think about it, COVID took away a bunch of your matches. So over nine seasons, you talk about your former staffs, your current staffs, your former players, your current players. Uh, again, as you take a look back, do you remember, by the way, who your first win was against? Seattle University. At, over at Seattle, right? Yeah, absolutely. 3-1. I know that. And then at home was your second win against the Idaho Vandals, so you yep. knocked off for win number 100. Uh, do you remember what it was like your first game at Washington State University and getting that first win over Seattle University? Just like it was last night, nervous as you know what, and uh, that's what, why we still do this job and the business we're in. And uh, if you're not nervous, you're not having fun, right? So uh, I was the same way 10 years ago or nine years ago as I was last night. And so with that, do you still have the – is it the same feeling every game? Is there is there a time where there's heightened feelings? I mean, I'm sure the College Cup maybe brings – but, I mean, there's, there's something every match, isn't there, when you go out there and you get ready? Because, you know, you take so much time as a coach. You take so much time as a team to prepare, to get yourself ready for each individual match. And, and I know that certain matches probably take on a little bit more significance. But that being said, each one of them are really sweet, aren't they? Everyone's sweet, and you, you try to appreciate them all, but you can't because you're hyped up in the moment. And I'm very superstitious on how I go about my day and everything that takes place there. And uh, my staff laughs about it. My own kids laugh about it. But uh, that's just what it is as a coach. And, uh, you know, any win is precious. And, again, to get 100, I'm very fortunate, especially in this game of soccer. Because as you saw yesterday, I had a, a great game, a great team that played. But it's 26 to 1 in shots. They're one shot, one goal, and it's 1-1 in the 70th minute. So that's, that's what's tough about this sport. Yeah, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the wins over each of the two teams, Montana and Idaho. Again, we'll get into uh, a conversation with Reese Tappen, one of your big leaders, and to some of your stars that maybe emerged a little bit over the weekend. Uh, I, I guess for me, my next question to you is after, after falling in the opening match in a game that really anybody could have had, how important was this week and this response from your team? I know you, you felt as though you've had a mature team. You were going to come back home. You were going to... You were going to answer the bell and have that type of response at home, but how important was it to have that from your team this week? As a staff, we talked internally. We knew it was a must. As a team, we had to sell it as it's a must, but we had to take decompress a little. We had to take the pressure off them. I mean, we had to let these girls be girls and let them do what they do. And I know when I walked in that locker room on Thursday night, and they are I'm, – I'm straight out, Steve – 
karaoke singing in the locker room. As I walk do my pregame talk, I'm like, it's game on. These girls are ready because the looser the locker room, the better the team's going to be. Are you a pretty good karaoke singer, by the way? I'm not. I mean, but uh, I'll try. But those girls are good, and they were singing their hearts out. And, and again, anytime as a staff you walk in and see that, you know that the mood is set. I just got to take my own deep breath and let them be them. Okay. I, I would like to know, do you have a go-to karaoke song, by I don't, the way? But Coach Matt does. Matt's a good singer, so we'll get Matt in here to do okay. that one week. Yes, okay. I don't. All right. I but, sing in the shower, but that's about it. It's not very good. Well, you know, I mean, everybody sounds, everybody sounds good in the shower. Uh, again, 2-1, two, one, the, uh, two and one, the victory over Idaho, 3-0 over Montana. How important was it to finish with that clean sheet over the Grizz? It was, it was a great um, – I both those teams, one won the conference tournament last year, one won the regular season tournament last year. So they're the top two in that conference. And anytime you have a, a opponent in this regional area, we're very fortunate to have the Seattle U's, the Montanas, the Easterns, the Mon uh, Idaho's to play because it helps the RPI. Yeah. So as long as their RPI is good and ours is good, it's a great game. But it's also – not a trap game, but it's a. It's not playing the Huskies. It's playing Idaho, and and they that everything for them was based on last night. And our girls handled it well and captured the win. And uh, we'll take it for sure. And you bring it up. I mean, we're in a spot where if you wanted to go non-conference, you could travel anywhere. And and at the same time, if you get some of these regional rivalries and get a chance to keep alive the rivalries, that's great. As long as it's good for both programs. And really, in both of these matchups, for Montana, for us, for Idaho, for us, these are good games to play at this point in time where everybody is at in their program great games for both programs more pressure on us less pressure on them they got more to gain than we do mm -hmm. we got to get the results we did and uh now I need those guys to keep winning. Both, both <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's the one thing about RPI. You always root for the team you just got done beating. All right. We're just getting things started here with Coach Schulenberger. Happy to have you with us on a Monday night. Again, we'll be here throughout the fall with the coach talking Cougar soccer. They're off to a 2-1 and one start this season. We'll talk with Todd about the win over Montana. A little bit more in detail on that. A little bit more in detail on the win over Idaho. They got a big game coming up this weekend as they make their way down to Stanford. Some of the stars that shine throughout the weekend. Again, We'll visit with Reese Tappen and a few other things as well, as well along the way. Happy to have you with us. Just getting things started here from Pullman and Zeppos. It's your Cougar Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger right here. Uh, it's uh, your Cougar Coaches Show from Learfield. Hey. They mean it. Not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows, and decision-making. They're in to help you through all of it. Because together they're proving, day in and day out, that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not To Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist. End the friendship. Or choose chill because that song lives rent-free in your head anyway. And you planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party. And the sound of that ice-cold can cracking open was music to your ears already. Coors Light. Choose chill. This Pullman High broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital and their Orthopedic Center of Excellence. To protect our student athletes, Pullman Regional employs a certified athletic trainer to work with students at practices and games, providing athletic training at no cost to their families because this program is funded through philanthropy. Doctors Tingstad and Hazelwood are on call to provide priority care to students needing it. Learn more about the athletic training program and join the team at PullmanRegional.org. Get your home turf ready to play with the game-changing performance of steel. Enjoy big savings this fall on steel handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at over 10,000 local steel dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. Well, we welcome you back to Zeppos and Pullman, Washington, where the Blues comes to play and eat. And your coach's show brought to you in part by Coors Light Mountain Cold Refreshment. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. And the Cougars celebrating a couple of wins over this past week over both the 
Montana Grizzlies and the Idaho Vandals. And, Coach, you take down Montana 3-0 in that game on Thursday night, the home opener. Let's start first with the crowd that showed up. We always get a nice crowd there on opening night, and certainly Thursday night was no exception. Another electric crowd, and it's always great to have that first event on campus, and, and the fans came out and watched you. It is. It was a great crowd. I think it was between 2,800 and 3,000 on Thursday night, and uh, they represented. They were cheering on all sides of the stadium there, and uh, – you know, student athletes, uh, fans, locals, um, you name it, across the board were there, and we appreciate their attendance, and they, they backed it up again last night as well. Absolutely. As again, uh, I was on hand for both of the matches and enjoyed both the matches from first the press box, and I went out and I wanted to be amongst the fans as well, so I got a chance to, to watch it from, from all angles up there. Uh, you, you guys uh, got your first goal at about the 22nd minute as Reagan Kotchow was able to, to get you on the board uh, first half, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, I, I thought some of the subs that you made in that second string, and you talked about this depth, uh, especially last week on the coaches show. I thought the subs that you brought in in that second group really performed well at the tail end of that first half. Yeah, one of our, our, our main focus points at halftime was the uh, players that came in the game elevated the game. And anytime you have that, you know you have a deep bench. And we talked about that, Steve, is the depth we have with this team and finding those rotations and bounce and who's going to start each week. And if they can set the role and, and do what they do, because they really elevated the game. I mean, Reagan had her, 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 had, her had her goal. Reagan's in the house here tonight, and uh, it's a great way to start. But you're absolutely right. That group that came in elevated the play, which carried us through the first half there. And I mean, that's kind of the 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 key that unlocks good teams, right? When you when you can find people that can not only find the roles, but even when they're not in the roles that they want to be in, which may be starting. They still find ways to contribute and then maybe say, hey, coach, maybe I can start next time. And, and I mean, to, to find that depth throughout and then to find that, what what did you really like about your second group once they came on? Their ability to work um, on and off the ball. And uh, I think they just made an impact because anytime you can wear a team down, and we really, to be honest with you, didn't wear a team down for 20 minutes. I thought, excuse me, Purdue, Montana was better than us the first 15 minutes. Then we took over. I thought they got a little comfortable. They thought they could play in the game. And then these reserves come in and really stepped up. And I say reserves kindly because they actually can be starters as well. And uh, anytime you elevate, like I said, it's a big deal. What about Kendall Campbell getting you that second goal before halftime to put it up 2 nothing for you guys and, and to give you guys not necessarily a comfortable lead, but certainly more comfortable than 1-0 and, and to provide a little bit of separation? I mean, as a staff and as a team, we've been really excited about Kendall. She's got a lot of room for growth physicality-wise, uh, she's got it. Um, athleticism, she has it, and she's a great ball striker. She's not afraid to take players on. Now we got to get her consistent day in and day out as a freshman. But uh, what she's shown this weekend, and I just really noticed it last night. Against Montana, yeah, great, she scored the goal. But last night, she was set up in isolation matchups on the field, and she really stepped up and took it on. Because some freshmen are going to pass first. She went at him, And I have no problem with the kid 1v1. Get after do what you got to do. Yeah, and, and to see that out of a freshman and, and to see her decision-making. And, and is there a line there between when to do that and when to maybe not do that and, and look for the, the teammates on the pass and define those delicate situations? on when to do which. And I mean, now I'm sure that comes with experience. It does, but it also comes where you're at in the field and where you're sure. at. Sure. Uh, for you got a 1v1 isolation, you're inside the box, I'm, I'm the green light all day, every day. Like, get after them, do your thing. Be selfish at times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are some coaches, and, and certainly you hear it from commentators, and who knows if commentators know what the heck they're talking about. I mean, I'm one of them. So uh, they say any shot is a good shot. Are you good? Or, or is that with you, or do you want quality shots? I mean, talk to us about what your uh, key is once you get into your half of the field and, and what you're looking for offensively. Be a scorer, not a shooter, okay? okay. And then uh, number two is, like, we want to create these chances. We didn't do it in Purdue. We were very disappointed in, our, in ourselves and our staff and our players of what we did not do. The last two games and over the last couple of years, you can tell we've dominated the stat sheet. Last night, it just felt different. Um, last couple of years, it felt like when we're dominating the stat sheet and things became tight, players became tight, they started getting after each other uh, and not in a good way. Last night, it just felt comfortable. It felt right. And uh, dominate the stat sheet, be a scorer, not a shooter, and put that ball in frame. Let's get after it. Meanwhile, was uh, was as you look at this game against both the Montana and against Idaho compared to that opening match of the season, obviously things lead up into you dominating the stat sheets the way that you did. What were some of the other things that you saw from your team that maybe you didn't see the opening match? Was it maybe passing? Was it ball control? Yeah. Was it we, all of that? We kept the ball. We, we were not happy with the way we turned the ball over at Purdue at right. all. And there's still room for growth, and we weren't great great this weekend but we were better if we if we have a chance at Stanford we got to keep the ball we can't just give it away when we win it 
Yeah. Again, Washington State taking down Montana in front of a big crowd over at Lockers, Lower Soccer Field, opening up that uh, home portion of the season, welcoming in Idaho for Sunday's game. We'll talk a little bit more about the opening weekend at home. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about Idaho. Then we'll bring Reese up as we get close to the midway point of the show and talk to her and get her perspective on everything that's going on 2024 soccer-wise. We're just, uh, again, kind of getting things rolling here on a Monday night. Happy to have you with us from Zeppos. It's your Cougar Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger. Happy to have you with us on a Monday night. And we're back after this from Learfield. Jan from Toyota here. At Toyota's national sales event, there's still time to squeeze more fun out of summer with a new Camry, RAV4, Corolla, and more. So go on, squeeze your extended family into a Highlander for a family reunion. Everybody in. Tammy, Teddy, Tody, Tommy, Toby, Terry. Wait, where's Rex? Or stop for some fresh squeezed lemonade in a Prius. Ooh, how much? 15 bucks. <laughs> okay, now that's a squeeze. Dealer in Victoria Mayberry. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends September 3rd. Toyota, let's go places. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital are being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Hampton Inn Pullman is just a short drive from the WSU campus, centrally located to restaurants and shopping. They've got you covered for all your lodging needs with their spacious rooms, famous Hampton waffles, a cozy outdoor patio, a gift shop for all your cougar gear needs, and the friendliest staff in town to make you feel right at home. Visit HamptonByHilton.com to reserve a room for your next trip to the Palouse. Coug owned and Coug managed. It matters where you stay. Hampton Inn Pullman. Hilton for the stay. Hey, Coug fans, can't decide what to do with your late night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Well, we make you back here with us, and we are here with you from Zeppos in Pullman, Washington, as it is your Cougar coach or so with Cougar head coach Todd Schulenberger talking about a couple of wins over both the Montana Grizzlies and the Idaho Vandals. And, Coach, one thing we need to get to that we haven't got to yet, there was word that came out today, Nadia Cooper, named the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Of course, the clean sheet against Montana. You take a look at what she was able to do against Idaho and and obviously a, a, a veteran back there for you that's got some experience as she continues to move up the all-time list at Washington State. First of all, a great honor for her in this brand-new conference to get one so early in the season. But also, I, I, my guess is that when a player earns an award like this, it's kind of viewed as a team award, right? Because obviously the defensive players in front of her help her be as good as she can be. And she, again, was named defensive player of the week in large part due to her own abilities, but it's also kind of a, a credit to the team as well. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll tell you, when this award came out today, the whole team in our little group chat was just blowing it up about Nadia and congratulating her, which is really nice to see, and we know it's a team effort, and Nadia's growth over the last four years has been incredible. She started out her career as the Pac-12 goalkeeper of the year, right? And mm -hmm. now we're in the WCC, and I'm really w impressed by Nadia's growth, not only as a person, as a player, but also in life, what she's got going for her. And uh, Nadia's in a real zone right now, and we're excited what she's doing. And uh, some great saves. She had a great key save uh, against uh, Montana Thursday yeah. night that uh, sprayed a ball across the frame of the goal. And uh, she's being consistent right now, and she's confident with her feet. And uh, we're so excited where Nadia's at and how we can move forward here. What's the most impressive thing you've seen out of her through three matches? Is it her footwork? Is it just her experience and confidence in that? Is it maybe a combination of those things? Or is there something else that I'm missing that, that you're most impressed with, with what you've seen out of her through the first few matches? I mean, her dad told me once that she was a wide receiver of football. And <laughs> Nadia's fearless about coming out for crosses. She has no fear whatsoever. And uh, her footwork's getting better, yes. Her confidence is excelling. But this kid is an animal coming off her line. Uh -huh. And uh, anytime she can deal with balls and traffic and players and all that, and uh, – I'll credit a little bit what her dad told me, that, that she was a wide receiver one time, wasn't afraid to catch a ball across, <laughs> down and out, and uh, she's not afraid to do that with the crosses. So very happy for Nadia. 
Again, Cougars not only get the win over Montana on Thursday night, 3 0, but then the border battle. And as you mentioned, a team that ended up being their tournament champions last season and, and got the, the trip to the NCAA tournament before they fell to Gonzaga. And, and a team that, again, continues to, to be a really good team in the Big Sky Conference and, and one that you had to come out ready to play. And, and they came at you pretty hard and you answered the bell against Idaho. But credit to them for coming at you hard as well on your pitch. They did. That was their World Cup match for us. And uh, I. That's why we play these matches. Again, it's everything for them, nothing for us, the game. But uh, we had to match our intensity. I thought there was a, a brief period in the first middle of the half and in the second half that we were a little bit off the gas pedal a little bit. Um, were they really scoring? Probably not. They had a great goal. Again, 26 to 1 in shots. We had 15 corners. I think there were one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, But they're a dangerous threat. They do what they do well. They play us hard. They're physical. And uh, it was a great battle. Yeah, as you mentioned, dominated the stat sheet with the, as you said, 15-1 to in the corner kicks, 24-1 uh, to one when it came to, to shots. And, and when you take a look at things, uh, you were able to get on the board. Jenna Studer was able to get you on the board first. Talk about that goal that kind of got us going to, to get the early one nothing lead. Well, I thought we had one earlier. It appeared to me across the line, and ESPN <laughs> said the same. But we don't have goal line review right now, which is okay. So Jenna got one off a corner there, and uh, that actually would have been our third corner of the day, really. Uh, but it didn't happen. But she got her on the board great goal by jenna and it's a way to get that thing rolling yeah and then uh, they come back early in the second half and tie things up but then you guys come back and answer the bell and, and get a goal with about 20 minutes left to play to, to to get what ends up being the go-ahead goal but at that time was the game uh game game go-ahead goal and it was the 70th minute when you got a big goal from juliana duckett and a nice job for her to get on the score sheet it was great i mean that goalkeeper for them played awesome last yeah. night i mean we we tested her all throughout the night but julian had a ball that came across off a corner bounced on top of the frame and she put it right in there so Credit to her getting her first goal as a transfer student from Pepperdine, and uh, we've been excited about Julianne's performance so far. As you've seen the scoring so far in these two matches and kind of spread out, what have you seen from some of your transfers and, and uh, obviously a freshman getting on your scoreboard for you? What have you seen from your offense so far and, and the attacking end of things? And, and have you been pleased for the most part with what you've seen offensively? Yeah, I like our bounce across the team. We're hard to scout now in scouting reports because we have numerous goal scorers, right? There's not just going to point at the one player that's going to score these goals. So it's a big balance. Um, you know, it keeps them hungry and fresh every day in practice. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a good thing for us. The other thing, too, is that the Idaho match that, that – and, and they were coming off their second match of the week, too. But, I mean, you guys look – you look pretty fresh uh, for a second match of the week. And, again, I, I think now, obviously, it's early in the season, but I also think that that speaks to your depth that you've been talking about. 100%, Steve. I mean, our depth helps us. Sunday soccer is not always pretty soccer. Sunday right. soccer about the whole bench, the whole team, everybody's got to do their deal. And uh, I didn't feel at all we were actually tired either. We no. didn't have heavy legs, et cetera. Um, I think we've done a good job in camp of balancing this out between our practices and our weight room. And uh, – we just got to continue now. We got a one game we're coming up, so we like get a little rest downtime now and get ready for next Sunday. Talked a little bit about the goal scorers. We talked a little bit about Naughty. Am I missing anybody? Anybody that you thought had a really nice weekend or a special match over the course of the couple of games that you'd like to to point out as far as uh, somebody that you saw either on tape or or as you were watching it live is going okay. This 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 person's playing pretty well for us today. I was really impressed with their back line over the weekend and how well they did and giving up limited shots and only giving up one goal. I think the whole board across the group, all four of them were great. And I, I thought offensively, uh, Rahana Reed and Megan Santa Cruz made an impact. They really did. I mean, they're special on the ball. The ball didn't go in the net for them this weekend, but they made things happen. Anytime you have players that can be isolated 1v1 or, 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 or create things on their own, um, is a good thing. Yeah. Again, Washington State University, they answer the bell at home this weekend. They end up with a big win over Montana, 3-0. They come up with a 2-1 victory over the Idaho Vandals, 2-1 on the season, and they get ready for a big trip to Stanford. Talk a little bit about that with Coach Schulenberger coming up. A little bit more to go on the show as well as we're, again, getting close to the midway point. Should we bring up Reese next? Is that some good team? Reese, you ready to go, Reese? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I You're think next. we can do her in a couple of minutes. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll come back with one of the co-captains of the Cougars, Reese Tappen. She's going to join us right here. It's your Cougar Coaches Show right here, and it's all from Learfield. At U.S. Bank, when they say they're in it with you, they mean it, not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows and decision-making, they're in to help you through all of it. Because together they're proving day in and day out that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. 
Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not to Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist. End the friendship. Or choose chill because that song lives rent-free in your head anyway. And you planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party. And the sound of that ice-cold can cracking open was music to your ears already. Coors Light. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. You may be eager to break ground on a new outdoor project, but never just start digging. Buried electric and natural gas lines can be anywhere. It's the law to call 811 at least two business days before you dig. Spray paint white lines showing your dig zone, and a crew will mark the utility lines. Mark accuracy zone is within two feet of the mark, so always hand dig to expose the line first. Call 811 before you dig. The service is free for residential customers. Avista, we just want you to be safe. In 2004, Pullman Regional Hospital opened its facility on Bishop Boulevard. It became a model of what a community hospital could be. Word got out about the extraordinary care people were getting, and services were added so that local residents no longer needed to travel to Spokane for many specialized services. Today, the demand has grown, and Pullman Regional Hospital is working to meet these new challenges. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital. Your hospital. We welcome you back here to Zeppos in Pullman, Washington. It is your Cougar Coaches Show with head coach Todd Schulenberger. Coaches Show brought to you in part by U.S. Bank, a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Steve Rubbs with you on this Monday night, along with Cougar head coach Todd Schulenberger, and also joined now by senior and co-captain Reese Tappen. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, talk about this week as you guys uh, unfortunately had a loss to open up the season. As as a team, how you were you guys getting ready as you prepared to, to know that these two big games were coming up at home and knowing that you guys wanted to protect home field advantage and, and knock off both Montana and Idaho? Just take us into kind of the preparation as you got ready for these two teams. Yeah, no, that loss in Purdue was definitely hard because we knew coming out our first game we wanted to set the tone early in the season. But definitely coming home, we were like, we need to get a first win and especially being at our home opener we were like we need to set the tone early and so I'm very pleased with how this weekend went and setting the tone getting a clean sheet on Thursday was amazing yeah and and being part of that back line for Washington State University how important is it for you guys especially as you get deeper and deeper into match and you see the zero up on the board all right we need to get the clean sheet here for Nadia we need to make sure even though we've got three we need to make sure the other one is at zero at this point in time yeah no definitely growing up throughout my years here I've definitely learned that I need to be focused and everyone needs to be locked in for 90 minutes because you can win a game in the 89th minute so being locked in for 90 full minutes is something that um, Todd really instills in us and we focus and make sure practices were locked in even in set pieces sometimes we get a little relaxed but those are the most important important times in the games because you can give up easy goals off set pieces. Again with Reese Tappen, again one of the defenders, one of the stars on this Washington State University soccer team as she's taking some time to join us. Uh, again, we talked to Todd about the home crowd that came out at Lower Soccer Field. What's it like to play on that surface in that building or that arena, I guess we can call it, Lower Soccer Field, and, and at that field, especially when you have the amount of people that, that showed up for the two matches that were there this past weekend? Oh, our facility is, like, by far my favorite. I Every time I step on the field, it, I always get such a, like, big burst of energy because just the people there, there's so much good energy and just how Todd said in the locker room, we're always super excited coming out of the tunnel and just making sure that the fans know that we appreciate their support and we want to make the Coug community proud. Is that, uh, what, you're from Newcastle, Washington, so obviously stayed in state. Was that, was that part was it so your family could come and watch you and, and, and be a part of this journey with you? Was, was that part of the reason you came to Washington State? And what yes. were some of the reasons you came to Washington State? I definitely University? wanted to be closer to home um, just so my family can support me, but also Todd, um, I met Todd when I was a freshman in high school, so this was before like the rule changed. So Todd really was a huge part of why I came here. Um, we see soccer pretty similarly, and he uh, was very personal when I uh, came here on my visit. So he definitely was a big part in why I came here as well. 
Again, we've got uh, the Cougars with two big wins uh, as they knock off both Montana Grizzlies, the Idaho Vandals. You got any um, pre-match, I don't know if uh, rituals would be the right word. I, I don't think superstitions are right. Do you have any pre-game traditions as far as do you eat the same thing? Do you, do you, do you karaoke? Do you, uh, do you do anything pre-game match or on match day that you do every day or just kind of whatever? Well, you probably, you kind of laughed a little bit at that that question, but I actually do. I drink a, a half an energy drink before every game, and I put my right cleat on, and my right shin guard on before my left. So I you're do not have. You're the only athlete do that does that. Trust me, you're not the only. But did you have any program rituals when you were a player? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the shin guards had to be on right at the same time. Uh-huh. I mean, but at the same time, but put them on there, and then the, the shoes came on next, and. Uh, we had the Cobas back in the day. They don't have these shoes now. They had to fold it over right. You had to lace it right, all those type of things. So, you know, that's uh, what we do with soccer players, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't think it's just soccer players. Plus, <laughs> me, I've been around enough baseball players. Yeah. I know they're different animals. So, uh, I think it's just athletes in general because, again, you're competing at this level. What was it like as you went from Newcastle to playing in the Pac-12 Conference, now wrapping up your career in the West Coast Conference, just that, that jump up in talent and now playing at this stage in your collegiate career and, and just uh, take us through the journey of that and and I, I know that you had to have some confidence that you could do it but now to see you accomplishing that what does that mean to you yeah no when I first got here I noticed right away with summer workouts that it was going to be a, a big challenge and a, like a lot of out of my comfort zone so I really looked up to older players and specifically people in my position I was just like how are their training habits and what do they do on and off the field to get better and that I would say that has helped me throughout this process and trying to, now that I'm older and I'm a leader, one of the leaders on this team, I try and help the other younger players around me um, learn by example. And if they have like questions or just pieces of advice, I always try and be there to help support if they need help. Yeah, there, there's always that transition. Uh, and, and I think you go through it in high school, but you certainly go through it at the college level as well from where you try and learn as much you can from the older players, and then you're the one teaching. W- was there a player or two when you first came to Washington State that really you looked up to and took you under their wing and, and was able to, to help give you kind of some guidance into becoming the not only the athlete but the person and, and a member in this program that you wanted to be? Yeah, no, my freshman year, I had um, three players I looked up to. Elise, um, she was a very hard worker, and I really admired her, that about her. She Every day she came to practice, she was a big part of our team and a big uh, star up in the front line, but she came to practice and worked hard, like, all the time. Um, Bridget Reekin, um, obviously, I played next to her, and so she was a very big um, impact in my career. She was very positive, and I was young playing next to her, so right. she definitely helped. Um, and Brianna Alger, she was more in my position, and so I was able to kind of watch her as a player and just learn from her from a, like, stand, stand back point right. of view. Uh, and, and as you take a look at this team, you've got some very talented freshmen that have come into this team. You've got some transfers that have come to this team. Uh, as you take a look at this year's squad, uh, just uh, kind of the way it's meshing together here at the early part of the season, and I'm sure part of that took place during camp as well. Just how do you feel you guys are meshing at this point? Oh, I feel great. I think our team is in a really good spot. I think everyone gets along with each other. Um, we're all, we always have each other's back, and before every game, we really emphasize um, – working together and communicating. Um, we're the ones that are on the field, and so I think communicating between the players um, definitely helps us on the field, and just having each other's back definitely Fantastic helps. soccer player. Did you have any other sports that, that you excelled at in high school that you were, 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 were playing in high school? I love to play basketball, but I went up for a rebound one time and sprained my ankle by landing on a girl's so, foot, so, that's what so I know that. had to hang up the... <laughs> The foods. <laughs> okay, and then uh, one. Uh, so you mentioned Todd started to recruit you early on, and that was kind of that was kind of your signal that okay, this is the sport for me, and that's kind of when you really got going into it. Yes, I definitely knew um, early on I wanted to be a soccer player, but I definitely was testing the waters with both. But I definitely felt a passion with soccer, and then once I started getting recruited, I knew. Was there an influence that that leaned you towards soccer, or how did you get into soccer as a young lady? Um. I played it when I was, like, growing up, and my mom was my coach when I was five years old. Uh-huh. And so I definitely, playing it at a young age, I definitely knew that it was something I wanted to pursue. 
getting a chance to play, although it's not a conference match, Stanford. How, how uh, you guys? Uh, you guys aren't afraid of Stanford. You're ready for the challenge as, as you get ready for Stanford. Getting a chance to play them, even though they're not in the conference anymore. One last time, I'm sure that's got to be a little bit exciting for you to go down there one more time. Yeah, no, I'm super excited to get to play them one more time. I've played them three times, and I'm ready to get another win, hopefully against them. And I think at, coming off this weekend and going back on the road, I think it'll be a really good test for us um, how we can keep our composure from this weekend and help move it into the, the weekend. Couple more quick questions, then I'll let you go. First is uh, anything, uh, I, I'm not saying that there's any secrets with the team, but is there, a, is there a scary good dancer, a scary good singer? You mentioned karaoke was going on in the clubhouse. Who's the best singer or dancer on the team? Or is, is there one, is it you? It, it's, it's not coach, right? No, no, Todd, Todd <laughs> come on wishes. Now, Reese, come no. on. <laughs> uh, Leah's an amazing singer. Okay. And Nadia, she has the dance moves, I would say. Okay, all right. And then how about you scholastically? Talk to us about where you're at in your degree and, and what, you, what you're going for as far as your college education is concerned yeah I'm a early on I wanted to be a nurse but I, I took a biology class and was like oh maybe this isn't for me and so um, I'm a business management ma management major and so I'm excited to see what I can do with that after with pretty, whatever I take she myself. wants to play pro too yeah she, absolutely yeah, yeah. And, and so uh, as you go through this final season just the, the thoughts of that and, and, and knowing that that could be an opportunity for you at the next level knowing that again other players from this program have jumped up to that next level yeah, I'm super excited. I think um, watching the players in front of me that have had that opportunity, I think it's really um, motivating and good to see that I can have the same opportunity as them. So I'm super excited to see what this season can bring, and hopefully I have that opportunity at the end of this year. Again, Reese Tappen joining us. We'll let her go. We uh, are going to be very thankful Thanks. for her. Give her a hand, everybody. Reese Tappen, senior for Washington State University, <laughs> joining us here on the Kruger Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberg. We'll have more with the coach. I want to get your thoughts on Reese when we come back. I'm sure there's plenty that you can talk about. Again, it's your Cougar Coaches Show from Zeppos, all right here from Learfield. Hey, Kook fans, can't decide what to do with your late night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online... You talking to me, Steve? Community Hospital could be. Word got out about the extraordinary care people were getting, and services were added so that local residents no longer needed to travel to Spokane for many specialized services. Today, the demand has grown, and Pullman Regional Hospital is working to meet these new challenges. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital. Your hospital. Hey, Cougar fans, the 2024 football season is here, and SeatGeek is here to help you experience all the action. SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Washington State football games or to any other live event in your area, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticket marketplace of the Washington State Cougars. The most disruptive idea in ticketing? A ticket that works. Expect the expected. Seat Geek. With the WSU debit card from Gisa, it's hard to tell who's supporting who. When Coug fans use their WSU card, they show off their Coug pride and donations are made back to Cougar Athletics. But the card supports the Coug fan with big savings by helping them grow their money with Smart Plus checking. So, does the card support the Coug fan or does the Coug fan support the card? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that the WSU card supports Cougar Athletics and your wallet at the same time. Get your WSU card at Gisa.com. Check it account transaction requirements, terms and conditions apply, insured by NCUA. Well, back here once again to Zeppos. It is your Cougar Coaches Show with the head coach of Washington State University Soccer, Todd Schulenberger. You can earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms more than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Well, how good was, was Reese Tapp in there on the coaches' show? She did a great job, and it just shows her maturity as the years because she went from a, a young freshman to a senior captain who's really taken 
the bull by its horn went on the field and off. And uh, she came up here tonight, and I think she knocked it out. She knocked it out of the ballpark uh, as we take a look at her and the rest of your team. I mean, I think the one thing that sometimes gets lost in college athletics is the relationships that are there between you and your staff and your student athletes. Again, you started recruiting her, what, freshman in high school? I did. She played at Pac Northwest. Uh, her coach was Viet, and uh, I was on – so that's what a seven eight year relationship now with her probably pretty much Maybe. and i went way back and uh reese and i hit it off and uh we recruited her hard and, and she responded and look at the career she's having right now for us so i'm very excited what did you see out of her as you were recruiting her and wanted to bring her to washington state university what did you see from her that made you want to sign her to be a coup? she was an athlete number one number two she was a hard worker and she didn't take any nonsense out of the field she was she got after it each time and a uh, great ball striker on the ball and, uh, you know, you just – you could see an athlete and you could see her growth. And she had a, a potential to be where she's at and is where she's at now. And she played some little outside back and a three back. And now she's her center back. But uh, Reese has done a great job. When you see a hunger in a player, is, is that tangible to you as a coach when you watch them on tape, when you watch them live and in person, that hunger that they have, not only for the game, but then as you get to know them and, and – continue on with the recruiting process whether it's visits or whether it's it's phone calls of, of knowing okay that, do you get honed in on that as a coach the hunger the players have for not only being good but then also making the program good and getting better along the way 100 percent. and reese may be one of the nicest girls on the team but when that ball is rolled out there in practice of the game she's going to hold everybody accountable and she's going to get after it that's the one thing we look for here she rolls her sleeves up she goes to work she talked about elise bennett and brie alger and bridget reekin and they were all pros and reese is resembling them right now and, and this young lady works hard every day there's not a harder work that i've been with in the last couple of years than reese as far as getting done every single day there's been no no whatever you want to call it there's no drama all right it's go and that's what she does it seems like you you recruit that type of athlete to Washington State. That that's that's a credit to you over ten years at Washington State University. It's a credit to your staff at Washington State University. But as we all know, it's the players that build the programs and that that are, that are the lifeblood of the programs. For sure, one of the models we have here: nobody's going to outwork our staff or our team, and that's who we recruit. And that's who I recruit with my staff. No one's going to outwork us, and uh, that's who I was as a player and a coach and and everything else. And uh, that's what we like here. And and you got players that are talented on the ball but the, they just got to work and that's what i'm talking about i want to talk work rate and energy and effort and attitude as we get ready for a big week coming up for washington state they get ready to take on the stanford cardinal coming up here and then again the rest of the non-conference schedule before we get into west coast conference action as you've taken a look at the first couple weeks of soccer coach uh, just uh, anything that has stood out to you in the game as a whole uh, is there is there anything that you've watched uh, across the country or with your own team or across the conference that, that is noteworthy to you at this point of the season? Or are we all just kind of filling out the 2024 I think season? a little bit of both. There's been some bizarre results, but I think that's a little bit to do with the early part of the year. I think it's going to settle itself out. Um, you know, you have a couple top programs out there doing what they got to do, but uh, everyone's beatable in this game. And uh, I think it's there's a lot of parity now across the women's soccer sport. And, uh, I, I you know, it's just it's exciting to see and, and – and, uh, you know, the teams across the board have done a great job, but uh, I, I like where we're at, and I'm like who we, I like our non-conference schedule. I really have talked about this, and I think it's probably I don't know how it's going to go in the WCC yet, but this schedule here is a really legit schedule. I mean, Montana beat Oregon State last week three zero before mm -hmm. they played us, so it's it's a legit schedule. And we Stanford is we know what they are. They're number two in America. They're always top two in America, and uh, it's going to be a great battle. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about Stanford, and we'll do that when we come back. Again, we're with the Cougar head coach Todd Schulenberger. It's our Cougar coaches show, and we're live from Zeppo's on a Monday night. So happy to have you with us, and we'll be back after this. It's your Cougar coaches show live from Zeppo's from Learfield. At U.S. Bank, when they say they're in it with you, they mean it. Not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows, and decision-making. They're in to help you through all of it, because together they're proving day in and day out that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not to Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist. End the friendship. Or 
Choose chill, because that song lives rent-free in your head anyway. And you planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party. And the sound of that ice-cold can cracking open was music to your ears already. Coors Light. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Do you ever pay attention to overhead power lines? If you're like most people, you don't. But you should. Especially when you're working up on a roof or carrying a ladder outdoors. Kids who climb trees and fly kites and adults with drones need to watch out for power lines too. And on the off chance that you find a downed power line, stay at least 10 feet away and quickly call 911 and Avista. Always pay attention to power lines. It's your best line of defense. Avista, we just want you to be safe. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital are being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State. Partners in Excellence. Well, great to have you with us here live from Zeppos. It is your Cougar Coaches Show with Cougar Head Coach Todd Schulenberger again getting the season underway as the Cougars now 2-1 and one on the season. And now we start to see some of the other sports that will filter in as well as we get your first Cougar football hour. That's going to be coming up this week in a whole matchup with Portland State taking place on Saturday. Cougar volleyball is going to be in action this weekend. We'll have those games for you on the radio side over on News Talk for the Palouse, 11.50 a.m., over the weekend in Omaha, and of course the Cougar soccer team getting set for now what will be their third week of the season. And you talked about this a little bit last week, Coach. Whenever you have a chance to play a program like Stanford, you 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 sign up for it, right? Because it's a it's a challenge, no doubt about that. But a it's not going to do anything bad for you RPI wise, and it's probably just going to make you better as a team going up against a program like that. For sure, and uh, they've had great success as we know over the years, and. Uh, you know, when Paul called and Paul, they called us and said, Do "You want to still play?" And absolutely, there's no hard feelings with us and them and the, the conference stuff. That we're, you know, we're coaches. We're not anything else other than that. So uh, we will take the challenge. It'll be a great uh, game Sunday. And uh, you're right, it's a win-win for the Cougs either way. And uh, but we, as always, we go down to, with the attempt to win this game. As you take a look at Stanford, maybe if you want to, you can talk about the 2024 group. But when you take a look at the Stanford program as a whole, what does it take to knock off not only a program like Stanford, but Stanford in particular when you go up against a, a, a group like that? And what will take from your group this weekend? Well, we got to keep the ball better, our number one, because that's one of the things they're going to pride themselves in. If you can possess the ball against Stanford, you can create opportunities in front of goal, and you got to have this great defensive mentality because – they're not going to like to get touched. They're right. not going to like to get knocked down. They're not going to like all the yellow cards we had in the game yesterday. I mean, that's the things we got to do as a Coug to be better. So if we continue to keep the ball and do the other little dirty work, I think we got a good shot. How have you felt uh, about the way you guys have defended? Obviously, Nadi Cooper named the West Coast Defensive Player of the Week. You, you end up giving the one goal up to Purdue, and then you give up the one good goal for, for the Idaho Vandals. But defensively, you've been pretty solid so far, haven't pretty you? Pretty solid, yeah. But coaching staff's done a great job here with the, with the defending policy here that we're trying to – to implement here with the team this year. Yes, we've been great at it. Um, we've limited the shots, and uh, it, it starts with um, the players we put out there, our back line, but our pressing starts up top, okay? We are a high octane, let's get after them, let's, I guess you could say, punch them in the face type team, mm -hmm. and we're going to put high pressure on them, and it starts up front. So our, our defense starts at the front and ends obviously with Naughty in the back and our goalkeepers, but everybody's done a great job so far. How do you think you guys have executed so far when it comes to set pieces and, and your your thoughts on what you've been able to do the first few weeks when it's when it's come to that? Well, we scored three this weekend, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. so, and we could add a couple more. Yeah. I mean, so uh, that's a big thing we, we uh, you know, talked about all off camp, um, excuse me, on, in preseason camp is how we can be better on set pieces. And uh, I think we've done a good job. we got Reagan, who serves a great ball. Uh, we got a bunch of headers in there. And uh, it doesn't have to be pretty on these corner kicks. Just put the ball in the net. It does not have to be pretty. Well, the other thing that you talked about, I think, earlier this hour, if I'm not mistaken, was the fact that Idaho came back and got even 1-1. And you guys had so many 
more shots and more corner kicks and more opportunities. But at the same time, you didn't let that affect you. You still found a way to get that goal. And and sometimes, uh, especially when it comes to, and sometimes it can come in a, in a matchup against Idaho. Sometimes it can come up in a matchup against Stanford. Sometimes it can come up in a key conference matchup in October, early November, finding that goal and, again, persevering sometimes when you've had the opportunities, but the ball's just not going in the net, but still finding a way knowing that there's 20 minutes left on the clock, 15 minutes left on the clock, that you're going to find a way to, to get it done and that you've got options to get that done. Well, the, the, the message I had yesterday against Idaho was we had to match their intensity because they were going to come all at us, and we had to match that. But on the flip side, we had to be composed. All right, The composure part is what you're talking about, the last 20 minutes. We weren't tense. We weren't uptight. I tried to hide as best as I can as a coach, and uh, that's soccer. But uh, they were composed there at the end, and, and – and I actually did feel good about it. Even though you tied that ball game up, I did feel good going into that last 20 that we had an opportunity to win this game. Yeah. And when it, you did, again, you get the goal. And with 20 minutes left to play, you keep them off of the score sheet and, again, come away with a 2-1 to one victory and knock off the Idaho Vandals. So a perfect 2-0 and oh at home. You mentioned the non-conference portion of the schedule. UC Irvine, San Diego coming into town after that. A nice little trip to Georgia and Georgia State and Georgia Southern again. Uh, opportunities that are RPI-wise to really help out your team here in the non-conference yeah, portion Yeah, and then we finished up the last one against Utah State, who's beat Pepperdine 4 yeah. who beat Texas Tech yesterday. Yeah. So it's one of our toughest non-conference schedules for sure. Uh, we're going to take it one game at a time. It's all about the Cardinals now. Let's chop some trees this weekend, and uh, we'll worry about the rest later. Now you mentioned no hard feelings about Stanford. I did have somebody ask me, going through the halls of Washington State, are you rooting for former Pac-12 teams to – I mean, you guys, It's but it, as you mentioned, it's not the coaches, it's not the teams, it's not the players, it's the administration that kind of had this whole thing when it comes to, uh, you know, no longer being the Pac-12 conference. You don't have any ill will towards anybody in the Pac-12, do you? No, or we do don't. I mean, them? we just want to beat the Huskies every time, but they, won't, <laughs> yeah. play, they won't play us, so that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> all right, let's take one final break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up here from Zuppos. Glad to have you with us. It's your Cougar Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger right here, and it's from Learfield. Hey, Coug fans, can't decide what to do with your late night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Bro, you go hard for the WSC Cougs. What do you mean? You're literally wearing a Coug jersey that you bought from the Coug store with your Coug debit card. And you don't stop talking about how every time you use your card, Gisa donates to the Cougar Athletic Fund. I guess I do go pretty hard for my Cougs. If you go hard for your Cougs, get your WSU card today at Gisa.com. Go Cougs! Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 60 daily departures to more than 20 nonstop destinations provided by seven major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. This Pullman High broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital and their Orthopedic Center of Excellence. To protect our student athletes, Pullman Regional employs a certified athletic trainer to work with students at practices and games, providing athletic training at no cost to their families because this program is funded through philanthropy. Doctors Tingstad and Hazelwood are on call to provide priority care to students needing it. Learn more about the athletic training program and join the team at PullmanRegional.org. Well, back here for the final few minutes of your Cougar Coaches Show with Cougar Head Coach Todd Schulenberger as we continue on here on this uh, Monday night. Now, we will also point this out that uh, next Monday is Labor Day, so I believe schedule-wise we're planning Tuesday. Is that still your, your understanding? 
I, that's what I understand. So we'll yeah, we'll stay we'll tuned. Sure. Yeah, we'll make sure. Follow Jim Crawford. He's going to put it out on WC Soccer Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. Jim Crawford, you're going to have to let everybody know out there, and we'll let make sure everybody knows uh, about the show next week. But uh, with again with Monday being Labor Day, and I'll see you guys making your way back from uh, Stanford because you play on Sunday down at Stanford, and it's the lone match this week. Was that by design or just the way that the schedule kind of worked out that the, your matchup against Stanford was the lone match of the week? Well, it's a little bit by design. When we when we make these matches, we all always make sure we have a front-end game or a back-end game. And they said they're only going to play Sunday. I said it works for us. We'll be fair. We're not going to – we're never going to play Thursday and then go down to Stanford who's only one game and right. vice versa. So uh, we made it said like that, and we'll have a one-off show down on Sunday. What does that set up your, your work week this week? Uh, did you have a day off today? And, and then kind of how do you set things up as far as the, the week goes for you guys? The girls are off today, and tomorrow they'll have a recovery lift in the morning, and then we'll have um, some – Training based on their numbers and minutes they played this week in the afternoon. It's a little bit low key, a little bit individual based. And then Wednesday we get back at it about us, and uh, it'll be competition day for us Wednesday. And we start preparing for Stanford starting Thursday and Friday. Now I know your coaches staff, and, and obviously you relay that on to the players. Do do the players watch film and, and kind of go through that as a session with you guys and and kind of take us through that? I think a lot of people in another sports kind of know that that's the case. I'm assuming, and and I think I'm correct in saying that yes, that would be part yeah, of we, it in soccer. Yeah, we break down film all the. Every Every week for them um, we also do individual stuff with them we'll do pre-game reports for them everything we're going to say they're going to see it they're going to know every little thing about stanford but uh, and they're also going to know what just happened this past weekend as well again uh, a couple of big wins over the weekend and again to get to two and one on the season uh wins over both montana and idaho as we continue on here non-conference matchups against stanford then home against uc irvine and san diego had some great fans out this past weekend not this weekend but the following weekend you can once again make your way to uc Irvine's matchup, that's going to be Thursday, September the 5th, and then Sunday against San Diego, Sunday afternoon. So, again, uh, another Thursday, Sunday set for the Cougars, not this week, but next week right after Labor Day. And, of course, we've got the football game sandwiched in between there. That's going to be a, a special home weekend here on the Washington State University campus. Yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. Uh, football's kicking off. I believe we have the uh, – uh, Red Raiders, I think. Yeah, Red we? Raiders are coming to town here. Um, and – we got two soccer games. I don't know if volleyball is playing or not. And uh, a Hall of Fame weekend as well, I believe. So, yeah, so it'll, be got, a good, it'll be a good weekend. Yeah, they got, uh, I think, Eastern coming in on that weekend as well. So, again, should be a fun weekend here on the Washington State University campus. And, again, uh, as we get set uh, for what's going to be the remainder of the season, I guess as, as we start to wrap things up, any final thoughts over these last two games? And, and again, the fact that your team – I think the biggest thing is just coming back and, and answering the bell and, and coming up with two big wins for your team. Yeah, bounce back was full effect for us, and we had to do it, and we, we scored, what, uh, five goals and gave up one. Um, two opponents both that competed for the NCAA tournament last year, one that made it, one that got knocked out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, bounce back effect, you, know, you always want to see a response from your team after a loss, a loss that we probably left on the table because, I, you know, call me crazy, but I do think Montana's better than Purdue. And mm -hmm. it's just what we did not do well on that game the first day, and that's on us. And uh, we live and learn and move on. Yeah, I mean, you take a look at what Montana's done prior to playing us and just what we saw from them. They, they look really, really good, and I think they're going to do some really good stuff in the Big Sky. And I think Idaho's going to be good, too. I, yeah, I think I that do. the coaches have that picked right. I think those are the top two teams in the Big Sky Conference. 100%. 100%. They're the top two. Again, Sunday against Stanford, 1 o'clock. ACC Network is where you can catch that game. It feels weird to say Stanford <laughs> part of the ACC, but that's where they're at. And so, again, that'll be on the ACC Network. And then the following week, again, the Cougars at home, both Thursday and Sunday against UC Irving. Vine and ultimately San Diego. Again, we're here with Todd Schulenberger, and again, your Cougar Coaches Show brought to you by Northern Quest, where you can earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Uh, Reese Tappen, want to thank her for joining us here today on the show. Want to thank the head coach, Todd Schulenberger, for joining us here on the show. So any final thoughts over the final 30 to 45 seconds we have here on the show, Coach? No, thanks again, everybody, coming out. We're going to continue to grow this 
atmosphere here and uh, Kooks sports are a full effect. Go cheer on the football team this weekend. Uh, the volleyball team, and keep supporting Kook soccer. Absolutely. Our thanks to not only the folks here at Zeppos, our thanks to Reese, our thanks to Coach Schulenberger, our thanks to the gang at Learfield. Of course, uh, our three J's are once again, two in the house, one back at the station. Jared, Jerry, and also Johnny. want to thank all of them as we are wrapping things up here on a Monday night. We'll talk to you next week. Again, it's your Cougar Coaches Show. Thanks to everybody. We'll be here again next week. Make sure you make plans to join us throughout the fall from Zeppos. It's your Cougar Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger right here and it's on the Cougar Sports Stadium right north from Learfield. You've been listening to the Cougar Soccer <laughs> Coaches Show with Todd Schulenberger.